Here's more of our conversation with Rashad Robinson, Executive Director of Color of Change. In this work that you're doing, one of the things that you do is name names. Yeah. So let's start naming names, yeah, right? Yeah. But from your perspective, give us, an, give us some of the leading um, um, structures, organizations, institutions, corporations, and people that you believe are upholding um, a system of racism that keeps people of color at a disadvantage. Yeah, so it's, it's a couple of buckets, right? Okay. So like there is like the deep right wing infrastructure from the Heritage Foundation to the Koch brothers to ALEC that colludes with um, right wing media structures like Fox News, right wing radio. There's all of that infrastructure. Mm -hmm. There's a network of organizations in the state, these policy networks, mm -hmm. which have been strategic at undermining um, people's ability to organize in the workplace, have had deep attacks on civil rights, um, uh, reproductive rights, all these organizations that in the communities that are working to build power, help communities be able to do, um, have, have a sense of equality and build power. So those institutions are all at play. Then there's the enablers. Mm. There are the mainstream corporations that if we allow them, they play see no evil, speak no evil, um, hear no evil, and they kind of keep their toe in both areas. Mm -hmm. I remember when we were reaching out to the companies that were supporting Alec, and I remember we would call them up and they were like, we give a little to the left and we give a little to the right. And we're like, that's great, but there's not two sides to black people voting. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have to make a moral choice. I remember as we kept going on for that campaign, we would have these back and forth conversations while we had our public campaign. We weren't really calling out the corporations yet. And by the, you know, the last call, they would get their senior level black person on the phone with me and they would talk about voting with their grandfather and I would talk about voting with mine. I remember, you know, a very benign company, Kraft, mm. like was supporting, um, or benign to us in our heads, right? Was supporting um, Alec and had money in Alec and they, um, until we forced them not to anymore. And I remember getting on the phone and say, you know, um, black people like macaroni and cheese. So, you know, if we call this out right before, and forced these companies, over 100, to divest. But they would have been perfectly fine having their money there. Just like all of those companies um, that we went after as the lead up to the RNC convention happened. We, we, we mobilized our members. We forced many of these companies to step away from the RNC convention because things that Donald Trump was saying on the campaign trail. The minute Donald Trump wins, they all join the Trump Business Council. And they stay in the Trump Business Council until Charlottesville happens, right. right? And so what are the rules and norms of society? What is it okay and not okay to say? What's the, so, and I remember when I was um, at GLAAD years ago, and we led efforts to basically, there was a time when any time they had a story about gay people, they had someone who was like, who had went through reparative therapy mm -hmm. or from the Catholic bishops, mm -hmm. that there were two sides, right? And we had to change that. And the rules and norms change. We're like, you don't see that on CNN anymore. You may see people that disagree with policies, but you don't see that on TV the same way. Over time, you have to start changing the rules. I think back to a moment, a missed opportunity with all of this, about seeing not just policy and seeing culture and how we name names. What if the progressive movement had stopped Donald Trump as Celebrity Apprentice? He was traveling around the country and he was doing his birther tour on President um, Obama, while at the same time being given a platform to be seen as a mainstream good businessman. Could he have done that about a Jewish person? He could do it about a black person. How do we change the rules and norms of society so that the rules and norms of institutions, whether they be media, whether they be government, to push the needle um, over time, and from, and from my perspective, that creates a, a more human and a less hostile world. Mm -hmm. The last sip, we'll be right back.